to welcome everybody to the River Chat today. And I am sitting here with Bria McDaniel. Oh, my goodness. It has been so long since the last time yes. I saw you. You know, you and I were trying to figure it out. It was probably about 15 years ago yes. since the last time we saw one yes. another. And at that time, you were a part of a group. Yes, I was. And the group was called Livre. Livre. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I never did get that right. You know, yeah. it's Livre. A lot of people had it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my challenge, even <laughs> yeah. back then. But, Livre, you know. Yeah. But it is certainly good to see you. Yes, it is so good to see you too, Mita. I really appreciate you coming and talking with me. Oh, listen, it's my pleasure. You had a lot going on, yes. you know, during the time of the pandemic. I know everybody has had yes. stuff going on. Yes. But let me talk about something that I know is near and dear to your heart. I know that you are a mom. You have two children, but you have a pandemic baby. Woo, these <laughs> Tell pandemic us about. babies. Tell, yeah, I'm telling you, I've been seeing all <laughs> sorts of like TikToks and everything about pandemic babies. Tell us about your family and like what you all have been doing during this past almost two years now. Yeah, so life hits you fast and hard, especially when you you have children. I, I have my my eight-year-old boy, my, my son Chase, um, who is an amazing little kid he is that's my heart he thinks he's michael jackson <laughs> <laughs> so he's um into everything michael jackson and Fortnite and all the stuff that the wow. little kids are into these days but my little girl my pandemic baby girl woohoo let me tell you these pandemic what they say about the pandemic babies is the truth wow wow they are out of control <laughs> my goodness so did you have to do the teaching thing at home and all of that Oof, i mean how yes. okay all yes. right yes that was rough um i am not the greatest uh school teacher we've learned that since the pandemic <laughs> that so was... shout outs to all the teachers <laughs> yes and particularly those that have been teachers to her son chase yes okay thank you thank, thank you, you all for what you do <laughs> yeah um it's you know seriously it really the pandemic um just the whole learning thing it made me look at teachers differently and it made my heart go out to the poor kids <laughs> that had to stay home and you know just completely change their whole routine up and they couldn't go and, and play with their friends and and that was hard that was hard on on chase so it, it was rough and that was one part of the season that was really hard for us and of course you know people dealt with a lot of loss yes. tell us you know what that was like during that time you know yourself your husband everybody they're yeah. all cooped up and then you know did you personally lose anyone I was blessed not to have lost anyone, um, immediate family mm -hmm. um, or, or friend um, due to the pandemic, due to COVID and, and, and just the complications from it. I was blessed not to. Um, however, there are friends and people who are connected to my family that that we lost and, and it was rough. Um, but even more so than losing anyone, just the fear of it all and the 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 just the change the 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 change of going to having to wear a mask um being pregnant during the pandemic that presented a whole nother yeah uh, set of imagine. complications and wow. just things that you wouldn't think of um i literally had to give birth with the mask on Wow. They, yeah, that and was And the rough. first the first impression your baby girl saw was mommy wearing With a, a mask. mask. That's incredible. Yeah. That was you you don't think about something like that right. being a a big thing, but it really was. It sure. was very hard and I just imagine laying on the table and they're like, "Okay, we understand, but you have to keep your mask on." I'm like, I'm trying to get this I know. I baby. know. I know. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Wow. But um, well, praise God. You know, she's healthy, she's beautiful. Thank I've you. seen her. I've seen both of them. They are amazing children. <laughs> thank you. So, congratulations on being a phenomenal mom and you have a thank phenomenal you. husband to help you out. I so, do. you are truly blessed all around. Yes. Now, let me ask you about church life because yeah. I know that you are a PK on both sides I and am. church life during that during those two years of the pandemic what was that like for you it was a, a shell shock it was it was a it was crazy because it was so different i i will i will never forget the watch night a new year's night 
that was literally the first night that I was watch night that I was not in church. And I that remember for, that yeah, feeling too. That for me was big. It was weird. It was weird. It was very big for me because I'm like, I never have not been in church on New Year's night. And so to not be able to go to church on New Year's night and um, just on Sundays, you know, not coming in every Sunday, that was rough because it was like, like, you know, on a Sunday morning, especially being a PK, I also work in the ministry with my uh, parents. I help them. And so not having um to get up and have that hustle and bustle on sunday mornings at first it was like oh i get a little break you feel then like I'm, you get a little you, time yeah off, you're you know? like oh i got a little break but then after a while i was like okay i'm ready to go back now like when is yeah. when's the break over <laughs> because it's nothing that really compares with coming in and just fellowshipping with people you know right it's nice that one-on-one yeah that one-on-one that 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 just the the camaraderie and the the talking and the communication and the just all of that, you know, you miss that when when it's taken away. And now we're tell we're telling people they have to be socially distant from yes. their brothers and their sisters yes. in Christ, even the families. Yes, yes. I, like even um, the, that Christmas or, or was it Christmas um, or was it Thanksgiving? One of the um, the holidays we didn't. My family did not get together like normal, and um, you know, like so many other people, right. and that was just. That was just rough. It was rough. Wow. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, I know that, you know, we still have, it's still a very much a real thing, but I'm glad that we're at least coming back to being around people again, you know? Okay. So now the thing I wonder about, you know, as an artist, yeah. your creativity during this time, I mean, you know, what were you doing with it? Yeah. Well, actually I used this pandemic um, to really just delve into um, my craft and my my writing and my singing and um, my my word even um, I used the time to really like just cultivate those things um, I I even took a songwriting class I did I um what is virtual songwriting a virtual, classes? it was and I actually wow. learned a lot from it it was um a virtual songwriting class I, I saw the ad online one day and it was for um Ryan Tedder from One Republic so this wasn't even like a gospel no, sort of which was even better yet probably yeah it wasn't it was really um you know I didn't want to squall uh, yeah yeah like <laughs> it wasn't I was, just I was like, i want to learn about like the art technique. of it like the technique right. yeah like the whole technical approach to it and like i mean i could write a church song you know my dad's a writer he he and my mom even like i've we can write church songs all day right. and um that's easy like the content of the song that's that's easy but i wanted to learn like how they learn how to do it so i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna pay this money i'm gonna take this course with ryan tedder and I wow. took it and it and I learned a lot and it was actually really cool. Um, so I did that course and then right after that, I did that course, I believe in January, right after that, right after that in March for my birthday, I did a writing camp for my project. I said, I'm huh. going to work on my project and I did a writing camp and I lied to you not. I put up on Twitter, I'm doing a writing camp. And I'm looking for some writers to come and collaborate with me and just, you know, vibe out. And we um, create some stuff together. And um, I got a response from, I got a response that I wasn't expecting. I got a lot of people that were interested. And so I picked a couple people and they came and we did a writer's camp in March of the pandemic. We socially distanced. We all had our masks okay. on. It was like five of us. Um yeah, it was about five of us. Um, we socially distanced, and we had our mask on, and we literally wrote my project together. Huh. All right, well, we're going to talk about the project <laughs> right now. River Song. Yeah. And this is the first, you know, from the project, and it was just released a week ago. Yes. A week ago today, as a yes. matter of fact. You know, so want to let everybody know. <laughs> That's right. It's available on all the digital platforms. Yes. So, you know, please support. River Song, tell us about that. Yeah, so River Song is actually one of the songs that I wrote before the writer's camp. Um, and it was something that God just put in my spirit after I was um, reading the scripture where um, God was talking to, um, 
you know, he was talking to his people and he, Jesus was talking to, to his people and he was saying that there was a cistern that they built and the cistern never held any water and they put their focus on these cisterns instead of putting their focus on him who is the source of their living water and he's like you're 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 focused on these man-made things when i am the source you don't need these man-made things i am that source of water for you um and so i was just reading that scripture and um i the song just came to me um it will never stop flowing spring of living water and i was like you know I kind of like that medley and I kind of expounded from it. Wow. And you know, that sounds so different for you. You yeah. know, I mean, from what I knew of you when you sang with Liv yeah, Ray, you yeah. know, tell us about the style that you are now giving us in, in River Song. Yeah. Well, you know, I wanted to do something that was unique to me mm-hmm. and that made sense and that felt right for me. My background and my upbringing, I am a church girl all the way through and through, okay? And the type of church girl I am is you you come in here on a Sunday morning and I'm doing praise and worship, I might be in a squall. Like, it, it's, it's very much possible. There you go. Um, that is who I am. But then I also have a duality because there is also a very... Um, much more soft side and and more musical melodic side to who I am and um I draw inspiration from the people that I listen to as like a kid like country music and pop music and that that is also very much Bria as well so with River Song and with um the music that I started to to make I kind of leaned into that side of me um which I didn't I didn't do it purposely to abandon the traditional gospel right. side either. Um I kind of it just kind of happened organically. Um but when we when we created and when we wrote and when I came up with a lot of this, it just morphed into this sound that sounds very guitar driven and very um just very different like it's just a, a different feel. And so that's what River Song is um it's a very, very, um, I think, in my opinion, I think it's a fresh take on um, music and, and worship music. So if we had to give it a genre, mm-hmm. and we know that it's not one particular genre, mm-hmm. would you say it's close to CCM? I would say. Okay. I would say that, okay, if we had to give it a genre, I would say yes, it is close okay. to CCM. But I would also say that it, it rides the middle very, very um, well. Like it can go, it can go CCM. But when you get to that drive, we can also go to church. Come on, we can we can go there too. So, um, and that's me. That's like me as a person. Like I, uh, it's it's very much me. So, um, yeah, I would say I would I, if I had to, I would say CCM. All right. Now tell us about your decision to become a solo artist. You know, you came from Libre. I know that there were a ton of you when, you know, you were going, you were stellar nominated. And then, you know, we didn't hear anything else more. Okay. Well, (laughs) Libre um, was me being a part of Libre. Libre was such a huge part of my teenage years early adulthood years i was 15 16 17 18 years old in lavray um literally leaving school going to practice rehearsal with lavray wow um yeah so it was a very big part of of me um and what i did um i had a i was so young and impressionable at that point in time i didn't know who I was really yet, you know, 15, 16, 17 yeah, years old. You still don't, figuring you're it still out. figuring it out. I wasn't that sure of my call yet. I wasn't sure of my uh, assignment. I didn't, you know, I still had a lot of growing mm-hmm. and learning to do. And so, um, when I left Lavre, I was in that place, um, where I, I needed to do that. I needed to find out some things for myself and who I was and who God called me to do and what my assignment what, it, what was it really that he needed me to do? And so when I left LaVray, I, I just took time to kind of do those things. I had my son. I um, 
got more heavily involved within my church and the ministry of my church. And so, um, that really happened. But, uh, LaVray was an awesome, awesome learning experience for me. Um, I made the best relationships with the most amazing people in LaVray. Um, I'm still great friends with uh, all of and them. Big shout much. outs to all of them. But yes. Big those shout that, out to LaVray. Those, yes. I love you guys. I met my husband in LaVray. Come on. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if it gets much better than that. Um, so yeah, that livray was an awesome time. I learned so much, and um, we are family forever. Well, that works. That definitely works. Now, tell us about you know what else you've been doing as far as like your humanitarian work, because I know that you've done quite a bit of that, and you kind of melded it into the whole artistry of being a gospel musician, and yeah. you know, just being a gospel artist. Yeah. Um, so if anybody knows me, I, I love like, um, I love humanitarian work, like giving back. I'm always doing something like that. Um, I had an organization, even we did prom dress drives. I partnered with some schools yes, in the Bronx. Beautiful. Yeah, we, we've done a lot of things like that. Um, Right now, what we're doing is a campaign um, to just really be a blessing to the city um, of the Bronx, my hometown. Which I, is in New York, for anybody that's not quite sure. Yes, the Bronx, And for New those York. that know New York, it's the Boogie Down Bronx. It's the Boogie Down, first of all. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wanted to really just be a blessing to my community. So um, I partnered with some organizations here. I'm still in the process with even adding more. I got a call actually just yesterday um, about an organization who works with teen moms. Okay. that I'm going to be doing something with as well. Yeah, so we're just partnering with um, just organizations for the groups of people that are in need. Um, we're giving away a thousand toys this year um, in the holiday Christmas time, a um, thousand meals. Oh, and um, we're going to be giving away some money to some families who are in need. So that's, that's really where my heart is. Um, and I wanted to do that and connect it to the music because of... Um, the theme of my single river song is that basically everything that you need is in the river of God. He's going to meet your needs. And I was like, you know, what better way to express that than help meet some needs for some of the people in our community. So that's what we're really doing. I have an amazing team that is working with me on this and, um, we've been able to be a blessing so far and I'm just looking forward to even more doing even more in the community. Well, I am definitely looking forward to hearing about more what you're doing as far as with the community and kudos to you. Thank I think you. that's an amazing thing Thank that you, you are doing. You are definitely setting an amazing trend for people of your generation because, you know, it seems like church has been different and ministry has been it different has. for people like within your generation. It has. It has. It has. It's, um, you know, my generation is, is so funny. We are so um, gifted and so talented and, and we just know so much and we have so much at our fingertips. Um, but we have sometimes, I don't want to say we know too much, but sometimes we know too much, you know? And so I feel like right now what's happening is there is a shift in church and ministry and the way that uh, people want to be reached. And mm -hmm. I feel like our generation is the generation that is, is really introducing that change and that shift. Um, but at the same time, it's so, it's so funny you say that at the same time, and I may be going a little too far into the conversation, but it's at the same time with everything that is happening right now, I feel like our generation, every generation needs Jesus, but yes. my generation really, really needs him right now. We are at a pivotal point. Very much yeah, so. Yeah, a pivotal, Very pivotal so. point. So do you see people, when you say your generation turning away from church as you know, those who were of my generation traditionally saw it. I mean, what's going on? Where's the disconnect that you can see? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a great question. I do feel like a lot of my generation has turned away from religion as a whole. Right. They kind of, a lot, I'm not going to say this for everyone, because there is also a group of my generation who is very strong within, within their relationship with God. But... 
my generation is more specifically past religion. We are like so turned off from church, you know? And I feel like, um, it's because a lot of what we learned growing up, um, equates God to, um, a transactional God, um, a God who is, if you're good, then he's good. Um, you gotta do this and then you get this and then, um, you might get hurt and it gets sweep swept under the rug. And Mm -hmm. like, we've dealt with a lot of those, uh, things that, that kind of, um, crept into our foundation of who we think God is. And, um, I feel like right now it has just caused like a distaste in, in, in a lot of my generation in their hearts for church and for God and for religion at a, at a whole. So totally understandable. I mean, there's a lot of man-made tradition Mm -hmm. that, you know, people are kind of now bringing to the surface, Yeah, particularly now since the pandemic, where people are able to have their choice of their church. You don't necessarily have to die in the church that you were, you know, christened in, you know, you now can even go to churches virtually. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I love that you brought that out and you know made that point there are a lot of people that are probably watching and nodding their head like yeah yeah you know I know exactly what you mean but you explain church as a relationship you know with God and and not just church but you explain the relationship more so through your project tell us about you know that relational piece with God with your project yeah so my project um my project at a whole, the, the name of my project is called Back to God. If you follow me on any social media, you've been seeing me talk so much about it and hashtagging it and everything, um, because it really is my assignment right now. Um, I, I've taken this assignment very serious. There's so much that I could have um, done. I could have um, called the project something else. I could have went a whole nother way creatively with it. But God burdened my heart with the assignment of turning my people, my generation, my age group, um, the people that will understand the way that I present this message that he's given me back to him because we have turned away. Um, And the reason why I understand why a lot of my generation is turned away Mm -hmm. because my generation wants answers. And they haven't been able to get a lot of answers and and they want everything to make sense and a lot of things have not made sense for us and so right now um what i'm trying to do is with the music is i wanted to show that god is not really transactional he's more of a relational god and his relationship the relational aspect of god is that he wants to be with you through everything, through the good, through the hurt, through the trauma, through the mental um, fight that you have to face every day. He wants to be with you through all of those things. And so I wrote songs from my heart that touch on those topics, such as mental health. Wow. Yeah, I have a song um, that touches on depression. You know what nice. I'm saying? And, and so these are things that are real for, for so many people. And, um, I don't feel like, you know, it's not shed so much light upon. And, and let me tell you to whoever's listening to this right now and who can hear me, Mm -hmm. mental health is a real, real topic. It's a real topic and it's a real thing. And it's a real struggle for so many people. And it's okay to have a pastor and it's okay to have a therapist and it's okay to have a team that's helping you through this. It's okay for you to have those things. Um, but God wants to be with you through all of that. And that is my message. That is the whole purpose of back to God is to help this generation, help the the people that have gone through so much through the pandemic, help people who have gone through the, the plights of even like the racial tension and everything. We got to get back to God. And that is the whole theme. And that is my whole assignment. And that is the, my focus right now. Well, praise God for that. All right, girl. I love that. I love that. Now, I see that people are already singing River Song in churches. How does that make you feel? I mean, I've seen the videos and I said, wow, these people are already catching on to it. And it's only come out since December the 3rd. Listen, um, seeing someone sing 
a church sing river song already um even if it was three months later just it's just seeing it being sung period is it is it was like surreal it was really surreal me watching that video and when a friend of mine sent it to me i literally was like i was just i don't know i was blown away i was at a loss for words because I, when I when I wrote the song and when we recorded the song and when I put the song out, I don't know if if I my brain was even thinking you know it's gonna go and people are gonna listen to it and they're gonna want to sing it at their churches. That is incredible. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. So I want more people to be singing it at their churches. I hope that it goes even further and that it's on everybody's playlist Sunday worship sets sing it at your churches yes. I posted the other day I'm like send me more of these because if you're singing them at your church I want to hear it and I it's blessing me <laughs> so one big thing that came out during the pandemic is people did a lot of challenges so are we looking for a river song challenge Ooh. I think I think I think I <laughs> think we should do that strong thing yes strong thing I'm just yes. putting it out there I can see it now hashtag River, River song, song challenge. challenge. Okay, all right. Let's do it. I've been saying I'm like, y'all, should we do this? People are like, <laughs> some people are like, yeah, we should, we should do it. So I think it's gonna happen. We gonna work. All on right, it. make it happen. We gonna work on that. <laughs> make it happen. So let's talk about some of the other songs that you yeah. know. First of all, the next, the full project is gonna be out in 2022. Yes. How many songs about you think will be on there? It's about eight songs. Okay. Yes, about eight songs in total. Um they are my babies each of those songs i literally put my heart into these songs my uncle um bishop walker bishop hezekiah walker says something that is so true he says um, whatever comes from your heart speaks to the heart and so the songs that i wrote and the songs that we came up with together they all heart songs and this project means so 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 much um to the call that i and, and the assignment that i'm at um my effort is to fulfill the songs my mom called me the other day <laughs> i gotta say this my mom called me the other day and said bria i had to turn turn because i send them all my music before okay. i finish it um just to get their their uh opinion my mom my dad my sister okay. and my brother-in-law and so we have a family group chat and so i sent them i send them all the songs and so she my mom called me the other day like Bri, so they're a think tank yes they are a think tank there you, go. you know what shout out to my think tank i have to say shout out to them because i literally use them for a little bit of everything they are they give me ideas okay they are my marketing team <laughs> they're my they also wrote some of the songs with me my sister Come and my on. brother-in-law um, we do a little bit of everything together, but I send them the music. And so my mom, she, she calls me the other day. She's like, Bri, I had to turn it off. She said, I told your father, turn it off because I have something to do and I cannot be sitting here crying. <laughs> wow. That, that's yeah. huge. That's yeah. huge. <laughs> yeah. So we, we definitely tried to pull on some heartstrings with these songs. All right, all right. So we got a little combination here. We got some CCM. We also have some of. Tell us what else we got on there. We have. We got any bumps? As the young folks say. Any bumps? We got. We got like any, shout we, music. Yeah, we, we no. got it. Okay, that's all right. That's it's, all right. it's no. It's no shout not everything. Music. Not everything has to be be a, a, a jump and run. Yeah. You know what I mean, sometimes we have to be very pensive and, yes. and thoughtful yes. in our music, and you know, just contemplate on the goodness of God. I love that. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So, all right. You know what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get here. And it's all going to be good. And it's already available. The first song, River Song, is out there right now it's on all right now. of the digital outlets. So let's talk about some other things that's going on yeah. for you that you just want to share with the folks. Is there anything that you want to let them know about? Definitely, we want to mm. let everybody know about your social media. I know some folks are already on YouTube and Facebook watching us here live. And you know, where else can we continue to follow you, Bria? Yes, um, you can find me, I'm everywhere. I'm on Instagram, at Bria McDaniel. Um, I'm on Twitter, also at Bria McDaniel. Facebook is at Bria McDaniel Music. Um, YouTube is also Bria McDaniel. 
I think that's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it for yeah, now. Yeah, it's everywhere. I'm Bria McDaniel. You can find me, um, you know, on all of the uh, digital platforms: um, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, Amazon, um, YouTube Music. I'm everywhere. Find me, follow me, add me, message me. I have to say, I've been getting so many messages um, about River Song, and yeah. it's so funny because I literally respond to every single one of them, and I enjoy the messages. I literally have been talking to people. Send them, everybody. <laughs> Send me messages. Send them, please. You know, I will talk I, it's back. It's refreshing to have people respond to you. <laughs> yes, I I love it. I I do like talking back to people. It's so funny because. I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, I found myself the other day, like my husband, he's always fussing at me, like, get off your phone, you're oh on the goodness. phone too much. But I'm I'm sitting there like, man, I mean, I've been talking, I go through my messages, I'm talking to so many people wow. per day. <laughs> yes, reach out, be kind now, yes. don't be crazy. Yes. This is a mom, you know, she's, she's a wonderful person, <laughs> got a great project going on. Thank you. And you've got the way in which to reach out to her. And, you know, we certainly want to continue to support River Song, and we're yes. looking forward. Now, can you tell us like where in 2022 we're looking to Ooh. see the full project? Okay, I can't say for certain. I know that a the plan originally was a little earlier, but okay, uh, okay, we're still working that out. I can say for sure it'll definitely be um, within the first half of the year. Okay, no later than the first half. Okay. It's done. All right. It's absolutely finished. Um, we're just trying to figure out exactly how we want to roll it out. But it's finished. It's waiting. And I want to drop it so bad. Like, I, my husband has to tell me, calm down. Because <laughs> I want to just put it out so bad. Because it's just, I'm just so excited about it. Um, but it's coming. The first half of the year, you will definitely get it. Now, getting into the churches and stuff again, I mean, are you looking forward to doing that? I know that from from church building and, you know, services, yeah. people are doing virtual. Some people are doing in person. you got a social distance. Yeah. Are you looking forward to, like, getting your project out and being in front of a live audience? I am. Okay. I am looking right. forward to that. We're going to put it out there. We're going to pray on that. Yeah. That's going to happen. Yeah. We're going to make that happen. Yes. We're going to pray that thing down yes. for you, okay? Because I'm sick of this COVID <laughs> I know, Stop. I know. It's it's a challenge. It's a challenge, it and, and you really need. I mean, you're already seeing videos. You know that your song is getting out there. People are receiving it, but you know we want that human in person. We, yeah, we want that in person energy back again. Yeah. So you know we're gonna pray for that for you. So please do, Bria. <laughs> we thank you so much. Thank you, the Rita. River Chat, and again, make sure you support my girl, Bria McDaniel. River Song is the name of project that's already out was out since december the third so catch up everybody it's get been a it. whole week get it get it now <laughs> thank you Mita. i appreciate you thank you as well <laughs>